is Tom Ross on your right. Daniel Santo, it is pronounced Santo. The H, the I, and the R apparently are silent. That is what Daniel has told us. I don't think he would troll us here in the booth this early, but perhaps he would be. Either way, ooh. Tree Top Village. Creature type ape to I, get the game started. I think this is the this kind of matchup though is is really excellent for Ross. The attrition elements are all all good. A lot of Santo's cards just they cost three and four mana, and they aren't necessarily good even if they resolve. And eight racks are very good against that because you're attritioning out all their cards. It's really hard for them to make their land drops and hold on to a card that costs that much. If you're going to play that way, the card that you resolve has to be really impactful. And a lot of Santos' expensive cards are just creatures that die anyway. It'll be a thought he's here for the boss. He's going to fall down to 18. Urborg is the land he used to play it. Goodbye, Dark Confidant. The hand does have Tarmogoyf, Scavenging Ooze, Liliana of the Veil, Blooming Marsh, and an Inquisition of Kozilek. There is the Blooming Marsh, and here comes the Tarmogoyf. So, we're going to head back Tom's way. Tom with the old-school zebra creature collection sleeves. You don't see those often. Also, Detective Ross is making a comeback. Oh, yeah. As you can see. He's on the case. The mustache is back here for the boss. One of my favorite Tom Ross looks. As here's a copy of Raven's Crime. That'll discard a Liliana. We'll see what else the boss has. Next here, assuming he has another land and spell to play. Interesting there that Santo will want to discard the Liliana of the Veil. That seems like one of the better cards in the matchup here. If you're going to be down on cards in hand and Ross is not, that sounds like a really ideal position for, for Liliana to be able to keep you kind of at parity and maybe even get to the ultimate. Looks like Santo is going to fire off that Inquisition of Kozilek. So the boss is going to have to fan out his hand. You see a copy of the Rack Surgical Extraction. Looks like a Liliana of the Veil as well. And then a copy of Marsh Flats here for Tom. Not bad news here for Santo. You can take the Liliana of the Veil out of that hand. And then it's a race of Tarmogoyf uh, versus Racks that really aren't set up to be that good so far. There goes the Liliana of the Veil. They're going to try to figure out the size of the Tarmogoyf as there is a Swamp and here is a Scavenging Ooze. Now here comes Tarmogoyf in for a three. So, you know, Ross's recourse from here is he can play the rack, he can retrace the Raven's Crime, and then it's a race with Ross drawing very heavy to uh, something like Smallpox or really any removal spell. Yeah, that's very, very true. It very much is a race now at this stage as there is the Raven's Crime. Goodbye, land. Going to follow up, I believe, with the rack here in just a moment. Keep in mind, Tom does have a copy of Surgical Extraction in hand. And pass the turn back over to Santo. Tom with just two cards in hand. Looks like Santo did take some damage from the rack last turn, so we'll get those life totals updated. His Abrupt Decay was a draw, and that's a good one. That's a huge draw. Uh, one, it gets an instant into the graveyard. And two, really swings the race back into Santo's favor, getting rid of one copy of the rack. Also gets an artifact in the graveyard. Oh, yeah, too. artifact, too. Yep. Yeah. Here comes Tarmogoyf and Scavenging Ooze now. Now, Tom does have some interesting cards to draw in this situation to get himself out of the trouble that he is currently in. He does have a one-of copy of Ensnaring Bridge in his main deck here this weekend. Fatal Push would also be a good draw here. Anything to remove the Tarmogoyf, and the race swings a little bit back towards Ross's favor. There are three copies of Fatal Push. There's a Dismember as well in the deck. Though Dismember does not appear to be ideal at this stage of things. So we're going to head back over to Santo. Santo will draw another copy of Tarmogoyf. Boy. He's going to fire up Treetop Village and swing in here for Lethal. Try to end the game right now. See if Ross actually has found a copy of Fatal Push or Dismember at this stage. I think Ross is checking to see if he can profitably surgical well, he's to not the armor go down, but looks like he's going to play the dismember to take care of the treetop village. He gets to use the marsh flats and tap it for mana because of the Urborg. Is there an ensnaring bridge on top of the deck here for Tom? I guess fatal. Uh, no, because oh. the scavenging goose can grow up to, uh, I think, large enough with the hit that Ross took last turn. Yeah, yeah, he's a you got you got to stop both things. Here come both knuckleheads. The boss is dead. Daniel Santos is going to win game number one here over Tom Ross. Golgari mid-range very quickly up a game here over eight rack. Uh, so uh, the way that things played out there was actually quite good of Santo not to, to basically ignore the Liliana of the Veil. I was a bit confused by it, but 
Um, Santo just decided to race there, assuming Ross had no removal spell, because you probably would have seen a small pox on turn two or a removal spell uh, at some other point. Uh, and Santo cor correctly identified that Ross was on discard, not removal, raced, and got the first game. We're going to the sideboards now, folks. We're going to start with Daniel Santo, who's got three copies of Fulminator Mage, two Collective Brutality, and a whole bunch of one ofs here in Surgical Extraction, Nile Spellbomb, Maelstrom Pulse, your personal favorite. One. Uh, yes. Uh, one in the main, one on the board. <laughs> one Liliana of the Last Hope, one Kitchen Finks, one Kalidas Trader of Gut, one Grafdigger's Cage, an Engineered Explosives, a Damping Sphere, and a copy of Damnation. What do we want here against the Rack? So I really like the Maelstrom Pulse and the Engineered Explosives as uh, a way of fighting uh, the permanents that get on the battlefield and deal damage. And I like uh, the Liliana and the Kitchen Finks as just powerful cards and an attrition-oriented matchup. For the boss T. Ross, he's got a lot of one ofs here this weekend as well, so stay with me. One Fatal Push, one Leyline of the Void. A Knight of Souls Betrayal, a Shadow of Doubt, an additional copy of Surgical Extraction, an additional copy of Wrench Mind. He also has Collective Brutality, two of those, along with two Nile Spell Bombs. Uh, an Asylum Visitor, Tom is testing me this morning, along with a Dark Confidant, another copy of Ensnaring Bridge, his own Damnation, and a Singleton Death Shadow. I would bring in the two copies of Nile Spell Bomb. The Ensnaring Bridge, the Damnation, the additional Fatal Push, and the additional Wrench Mind. Uh, just answers to creatures or more cards that give them a, can do some heavy lifting in an attrition oriented matchup. Wrench Mind's going to be really good here because Santo plays with a lot of expensive cards, really doesn't play with artifacts, and so that card should be very close to him to Torak. Well, those are the sideboards here for both players. They are going to shuffle up. They'll get ready for game number two early on this morning from lovely Cleveland, Ohio, my hometown. You know where you can watch and read Tom Ross? I'll uh, tell you where. I do know. I'll tell you where. StarCityGames.com Premium. Yes. This is a new slide. New, can, bra new branding, all of it. Go ahead. You can become a Star City Games Premium member today and receive instant access to the following benefits. Exclusive content from many of Magic's best writers, including Tom Ross, an ad-free experience. Get them out. Get out. You want, we're trying to tell you something, or some third party that uh, works with us is trying to tell you something. You don't want to hear that. Cut off. Canceled. 5% discount on Star City Games purchases, so you can get the money back from the subscription by buying cards you're going to buy anyway. It's called free rolling, and it's exploitative. <laughs> Head over to go.starcitygames.com slash premium. Become a premium member today. It's a nice ad read by you. Thank well you. Well done. Really well done. You know, so... I think it's a benefit of the website that I receive premium as someone who produces content. Yeah, just dropping hammers on Factor Fiction. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't get the 5% discount. Good. Good. So that's on the list of things now. Never got my Ammonite backpack. That never happened. Okay. Wanted to play with the Okie Doki dice. That you brought uh, over the future. I right briefly, there. That's, I, I haven't stopped that entirely. There's still some over there for you to mess around with. Got to gotta give me a sample package of the Okie Doki dice. Okay. Give me, give me a premium subscription. Chisel me out of my 5% discount. Yep. Just, I, I don't understand why you got to pick these small fights. Mostly so we have something to talk about on camera. Every day, every day I log, I, I log on Twitter and I see you giving an Ammonite backpack out to someone that's else. That's just not even close to true. It's not even close to true. My goodness. No, I'm over here. I'm over here. My backpack sucks. I have that horrible poker star. It's that really I've bad. For, that really I've had bad. for about 10 years. Yeah, it's really not good. It's horrible. Yeah. I, I would use a new backpack. Lost my dice recently, so I'm not even asking just because I want this. I, it's actually stuff that I need. See, now that I know that, I can have a better, we can have a more formal conversation. Cool. All right. Yeah, I'm not just yeah. trying to free roll here. Okay. Tom Ross. I uh, do want my 5%. <laughs> I got an order in my hand I picked up today, and I had to pay... Three dollars and ninety-two cents for these instead of you know the three dollars and seventy some odd cents it should have been if I was getting my five percent. That's brutal. Yeah, it's brutal. My Mirage Mountains. Tom, I believe, on the draw again. Yes, and uh, has kept his opening hand while Daniel has mulliganed a cheat code against the rack. Yeah, you, you had to get mulligan. You had that the the hand has to be extremely bad to send back because mulligans against this deck are brutal. They just run you out of resources. It's very hard to play. Santo is going to play a Verdant Catacombs. He, he kept on top of the scry. Here's Tom with an Inquisition of Kozla. Well, Tarmogoy is what did him in last time. There's also a Scavenging as an Akletus there and a couple of lands.
Not surprising here for Tom to take the Tarmogoyf. Can't take the Cletus. Scavenging Goose, not that fast of a clock. Santo will sacrifice the fetch line. Remember, he did scry on top, so he shuffled that card away, picked up a copy of Thoughtseize for the turn. It'll be a Swamp, and there is Scavenging Goose. So now Santo does have a threat. Obviously, it would be a great time for a copy of Smallpox. Yeah, that's kind of how you want to set it up. You're on the draw, opponent's mulliganed. A smallpox here, wrench mine also great. Yep. And you can see, you know, it doesn't, it's not so much about the actual cards Santo has in his hand or puts into play. A lot of it gets trishened out. So game eventually turns into a race here. Santo's going to have to be very, uh, top of the deck's going to have to be really cooperative because he's not going to be able to keep cards in hand. Interesting. Tom electing not to play smallpox last turn, leaving it in his hand. No, very few people know this, but very few people, pardon me, know this deck better than Tom. So, electing not to cast smallpox that turn. You see his hand here, Shrieking Affliction, the Rack, Raven's Crime, Mutavolt, and that smallpox. Santo is going to take smallpox. His last card in hand for Santo is just a land, so he'll play that. I believe he's going to search up a green source and activate Scavenging Ooze twice to grow it into a 4-4. Yeah, you can, it, it doesn't look great to, to empty out here um, against the copies of Rack and Streaking Inflection, but Tom just has more discard spells. So you might as well put yourself in a position where you're drawing very live off the top of your deck. The difference between two and three mana is huge. Well, there's your 4-4 four, four Ooze coming on in. If you are wondering what either of these players are playing as far as their exact configurations, well, they're available on your screen, Cardboard Live, providing deck list for us all weekend long, along with statistical breakdowns in day number two of competition, as there's Liliana the Veil off the top there for the boss. That'll take care of the ooze. Now Santo's in some serious trouble. Yeah. Well, he will not be able to keep a card in his hand for the rest of the game, and uh, Ross is going to be able to pivot and start attacking um, either with the Mutavault or with the Rack and Shrieking Affliction this turn. There is a Shrieking Affliction. Here is the Rack. And now the elevator goes up on Liliana. And now here comes Mutavolt in for two. Raven's Crime was the discard. And now Santo's in some serious trouble, folks. He's going to start by sacrificing the Nile Spellbomb and draw a card. Graveyards are gone. Tarmogoyf is the draw. Santo will take some damage from the Shrieking Affliction and the Rack. That life total will continue to get lower. Abrupt Decay was the draw. Not a bad one. The problem is there are three things that he wants to kill. He's going to start with Liliana and pass the turn back over to the boss. So Santo... I, I guess he's drawing to one copy of Engineered Explosives right now, but I think even if that were to happen, he would be run down by the Mutavault. The draw here is Maelstrom Pulse, your favorite. The, is it the one in the main or the one in the board? Unclear. <laughs> Unclear. Fortunately for Santo, that's a copy of the rack and a copy of Shrieking Infliction, not two of the same. And the Maelstrom Pulse will not be able to get him out of trouble. So Tom Ross is going to win game number two here over Daniel Santo. Eight rack and Golgari midrange. Going to get ready for a third and final one. And this is an interesting decision that comes up a lot here. With Santo now, obviously he knows what he's playing against. Tom has elected to take the draw two games in a row. Will Santo take the draw himself? It breaks kind of every intuition you develop as a Magic player, but this matchup is much more about just the raw resources you have to work with rather than trying to tempo your opponent out. I think it's correct for Santo to take the draw here, but I'm curious to see what he wants to do with it. It does break every intuition as a Magic player, as you said. You know, being on the play is so advantageous. However, in high power formats, it's yes. like that's like the whole game. Like Modern is a lot, you know, the die roll really feels like it matters here, but this is a different set of parameters. A different game is being played here. And it is about raw card count, as you mentioned, but also you saw Santo take a mulligan that game. Yeah. That kind of just does it, especially when you get hit by a wrench mine. Right, yeah. He just, you know, he had he was able to get a handful of cards onto the battlefield. Ross had a few answers for them, and there was no hope of Santo ever being able to set anything up or, or keep resources back or play a four-mana card. Like, there, that was just not going to happen that game. Yeah, not a chance. So... These players are going to get ready for game number three. You see Santo maybe going back to the drawing board a little bit here as he's just, you know, this is a matchup that most people are going to be unfamiliar with too. We can't forget that. Eight Rack is not really a deck that a lot of people play. Tom Ross is one of the few avatars for this deck. So, you know, that's where Tom does get advantage playing the deck as well. Very quickly, we do want to go over the StarCityGames.com spring sale. 
where you can save uh, save some money during this time of allergies mm -hmm. on uh, some very powerful cards here. Let's see if you can name them. Go ahead there, partner. I believe that is, well, obviously a Crackling Drake. Well done. One for one. Uh, a Japanese Draw New. What's the name of that card? The Plane Shift one. Is it Draw New? You played then, not me, bro. Yeah, that, but not that one. I actually think that's. I actually think that is what it is. A foil overwhelming forces. And yes, you're avoiding the green one. What is the green one? It's like a. Give me a. That's an incar. Uh, that is. I don't. Incarnation might be right. I know what card that is. But the question. It's. It's from. A, it's from Lorwyn. Give you a little hint there. Lorwyn's a blind spot for me. Yeah. I was not playing very much Magic then. Okay. That is vigor. Oh right. Yes. yes. Yeah, well, anyhow, go to HearthseaGames.com slash sale. Go buy it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Tom Ross getting ready to play some more Magic here. It looks like Santiel's going to send it back so we can learn a little bit more about Detective Ross here, who has top eight and open with eight rack before. He only played one open in 2018. He was doing some work for Wizards of the Coast, but now he is back in the fray here in Cleveland and I'm sure other locations over the course of 2019. Uh, his resume is very, very impressive, folks. Open top eights, 18. Wins, 6. Invitational top eights, 4. Invitational wins, 2. Back-to-back -back a handful of years ago. He was your 2016 SCG Tour Player of the Year. Edged out Jeff Hoagland. And we're glad to have the boss back playing Magic here on the SCG Tour. He's had probably our best SCG Tour moments. Oh, yeah. He's done some real damage. He makes up a lot of the top 10. Yes. And it looks like Santo has elected to take the play here. Yep. Mulliganed again. Treetop Village is where things started. In Urborg, and of course a discard spell will be Inquisition of Kozlek. You see the hand here, Assassin's Trophy, Dark Confidant, Nile Spellbomb, Maelstrom Pulse, and a copy of Verdant Catacombs. This is a really unfortunate hand for Santo uh, because Ross can take the Dark Confidant out here and then all that's left over is reactive cards that Ross is going to be able to pick apart at his leisure. And Dark Confidant will bite the dust as we head back over to Santo. He's going to very quickly sacrifice a Verdant Catacombs. I think he may have picked up a copy of Scavenging Ooze. He's going to get an untapped overgrown tomb, Will Santo. We'll see what he did draw, because he very quickly sacked that land. It is actually a copy of Scavenging You. So got it right as we head back over to the boss. Cards like Assassin's Trophy and Maelstrom Pulse, they're, they're important to have in your deck because, you know, you're going to get into a spot where you're top decking and having outs to the rack and tricking inflection is really important. But they are not very good to have in your opening hand uh, because they just sort of get stuck a lot of the time. There's a lot of burden for you to just play the cards that are in your hand when you draw them because if they're sitting there waiting for a target to line up, they're going to get picked apart by the discard spells. Treetop Village is going to get a little bit frisky. And now here's a copy of Fatal Push. I like Santo here. You know, he's not just throwing the Nile Spell Bomb out there. Wants to keep it in the hand for padding against Wrench Mind. I assume. That is an Urborg. The first one tapping for a little bit of mana to be able to play a Liliana of the Veil. Liliana's going to take care of the Scavenging Ooze. So we're going to head back over to Santo. He's picked up a copy of Kalidus. Not great in this matchup. Very expensive card. Yep, you need cheap stuff. Hard to get enough mana to work. Trophy will take care of Liliana. That means the boss gets to search up a basic swamp. I am curious about how Tom's matchup is against Is It Phoenix. Of course, you have to pass that test in this format. I would not be surprised if it was at least passable. Could actually be quite good. You know, you 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 do make it tough on them to set up three spells. Yeah. There is Raven's Crime. Goodbye, Kalidus. Remember, Ross knows the Nile Spell Bomb is there, so doesn't want to just play the Wrench Mind if he can avoid it. Tom does have another copy of Raven's Crime here. He's going to play the Wrench Mind, which means that Daniel is going to discard the Nile Spell Bomb. Okay, pass the turn back. 
Daniel will take some damage from the rack. Swamp, pulse the rack. All right. All right, well, top deck roller. Ross has got some stuff in hand, unclear if it's any good, plus his muta vault. But Santo has been able to get the rack off the battlefield. He's got three lands with which to top deck a wide range of cards. So not the worst position. In comes the muta vault. We'll head back over to Santo. He'll play a... Blooming. Looks like a Blooming Marsh, yep. Yeah. I was making sure it wasn't a Hissing Quagmire. They are very similar in art. Santo at 11. He'll play an Inquisition. Tom is going to lose, it looks like, a copy of Liliana. Tom was trying to set that up there. In with another Muta Vault hit. Santo down to 9. But Santo drawn to his creatures. That's Tireless Tracker. It's not a bad draw. Actually, it could be quite a good draw. Yeah. That's something where you can actually start chaining together some cards. Land here for Ross. It's a Shrieking Affliction. This is a Smallpox and a darn good one. Smallpox is going to take care of the Tireless Tracker and a land there for Santo. Ross will lose a land as well. Both players lose a little bit of life in the exchange. And now Shrieking Affliction is also going to get to work. And Tom gets to attack with the Mutavolt. Yeah, at this point, uh, Santo and I may not be able to stack his deck in a way that gets him out from under this. He's got to answer too many things, and he only gets one draw step a turn to do it. We go back to the boss. Mutavolt again. That'll be a fatal push. I'll take care of that. But you were underneath the Shrieking Affliction, and that is going to do it. Tom Ross going to win this match here over Daniel Santo. Two games to one, eight rack. Too good against Golgari Midrange.